Hey guys, my name is Christian Taylor. Welcome back to Crayler Made, where I like to talk about all things branding, marketing, and entrepreneurship. And sometimes I like to talk about VPNs because I like my privacy. If you haven't already seen my ultimate VPN comparison videos, be sure to check them out. Today, I thought it would be fun to take a closer look at my favorite VPN on my list, ExpressVPN. Now I've officially been using ExpressVPN for around six months. So this is not a short term review where I tried it for a week and just spit out my thoughts. This is my review from long term daily usage and all the ins and outs and quirks and upsides and downsides of ExpressVPN that I've noticed with my usage. When searching for a VPN, there's a number of things you might be looking for. I think privacy is the biggest concern, as that's why most people, including myself, are looking for a VPN. But there's also security, speed, streaming ability, extra features, and support. We're gonna be taking a look at each of these aspects because in case you missed it, ExpressVPN goes for the premium price of $99 a year. That's a lot to ask when you can find VPNs for around the $30 a year range. So is it really worth the asking price? Well, let's dive in with the first and most important aspect, privacy. ExpressVPN is based in the British Virgin Islands, which the company says has no data retention laws and any legal order requiring a BVI company to disclose customer records must come from the BVI Supreme Court. ExpressVPN says that in the case they are required by law to supply information to the BVI government, they do not collect any IP addresses, browsing history, traffic data, or DNS queries that could be used to identify any specific user. And that's the main summary of the ExpressVPN VPN privacy policy. They state at the top that they do not collect logs of your activity, including no logging of browsing history, traffic destinations, data content, or DNS queries. ExpressVPN is one of the best and most straightforward privacy policies I've seen from any VPN, and I'm confident ExpressVPN is taking measures to protect my privacy. At the end of the day, nothing is a guarantee and nothing is certain but I do feel safe browsing on the internet with ExpressVPN, knowing that my browsing activity is shielded from my internet service provider. And that's the main reason why I personally use a VPN. ExpressVPN uses standard 256-bit encryption, and they have a lot of information available on their website about the details of their security practices. From a privacy and security standpoint, ExpressVPN is fantastic. The only other VPN I can think of that does a better job in this category is Molvad. Molvad doesn't even require an email for you to use their VPN. ExpressVPN does require an email, but they allow you to pay with cryptocurrency, so it's still possible to remain anonymous by using a burner email. All right, let's talk speed, because if a VPN isn't fast, you aren't gonna use it, especially not at this price point. And I've gotta say, ExpressVPN is blazing fast. This right here is the reason I recommend ExpressVPN as the best overall VPN you can buy, because it just works. I think of ExpressVPN as the iPhone of VPNs. It just works, it's simple. You launch the app, connect to the server, and go about your life. I've gone days at a time on my iPhone being connected to ExpressVPN and forgetting I was even on a VPN. And that's how your VPN experience should be. Upon launching the app, you can choose to connect to any of the wide variety of locations, or you can stick to the smart location, which is ExpressVPN's recommendation for the fastest server based on your current location. This is what I usually use, and I love the simplicity of the ExpressVPN app. ExpressVPN is able to match and sometimes exceed the internet speeds I get without a VPN. For reference, my ISP advertises a speed of 300 megabits per second down and 25 megabits per second up, and when connected to Wi-Fi, I typically get around 180 megabits per second down and 25 megabits per second up. When connected to ExpressVPN, I get roughly the same speeds, so there's no bottleneck there. Now with that being said, no VPN is perfect, and I have experienced some hiccups and glitches with ExpressVPN. There was a few weeks back where it seemed like every site I would visit with a VPN filter would block my visit to the site, telling me I would have to disconnect from my VPN to proceed. Sites like Craigslist, Kelly Blue Book, and the My Account section of the Target website. And that's just one thing to understand. We haven't even covered streaming yet, but some websites do check for VPN IP addresses, and some will block you from using the site and make you disconnect before you can proceed. This doesn't happen often with ExpressVPN, 
VPN, and it seems they've fixed the issue lately, but for any VPN company, it's really a game of whack-a-mole with these websites. You have a smooth experience until the website figures out that the IP address is from a VPN, then they blacklist the IP, then you deal with the annoyances until ExpressVPN learns the IP has been blacklisted, then they change the IP address, and the cycle repeats. ExpressVPN does a good job at maintaining this challenge, and I don't find myself in many positions where I'm unable to visit a website entirely. More often than not, I'm simply asked to complete an I'm not a robot challenge, and then I'm allowed to proceed. Speaking of things being blocked, streaming is not one of them. Wow, that sounded like a Linus Tech Tips sponsor transition. Speaking of things not being blocked, streaming is not one of them. ExpressVPN proudly boasts that you can stream Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, and more with their VPN. I've always had a smooth experience streaming with ExpressVPN, but for full disclosure, I am not connected to a VPN for 80% of my streaming. Most of my streaming occurs on my Roku TV, and I don't have a router that supports VPN connections, so my TV's just connected directly to my Wi-Fi network unprotected. So while I've never had issues doing streaming with ExpressVPN, as I mentioned earlier, I'm sure you will run into cases here and there where you won't be able to stream, and you'll have to connect to a different ExpressVPN server until you find one where the IP isn't blacklisted. In addition, I've heard some people say that they have trouble streaming in China or other other countries, they connect to a US server and they try to stream Netflix or Hulu. Again, I don't really do a lot of travel. This is not a scenario that I've personally been able to test. I do feel pretty confident that ExpressVPN would work for you because they just are a quality VPN that's committed to making things work smoothly. But with that being said, nothing is perfect, everything has glitches and hiccups, so I don't know for sure if it's gonna work for your use case. And that's really why it's good to find a VPN that offers a refund policy. Whether you go with ExpressVPN or any VPN, make sure they offer like a 30 day money back guarantee. So if it's not gonna work for you and your use case, you can go ahead and get a refund and try a different VPN. Overall, when it comes to speed and streaming, I could not be more happy with ExpressVPN. This is hands down their strongest area and the reason why I just can't stop using their VPN. ExpressVPN is apps for Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, Linux, Chromebook, Kindle Fire, and even Nook devices. Like seriously, who uses a Nook and who wants to connect their Nook to a VPN? I guess so you can read your eBooks in private. If you want to use ExpressVPN directly on your router, you can do that using select routers listed on their website. Using ExpressVPN with your router is not something I've done as mine doesn't support it, but you can set that up. Then every device connected to your network like Nintendo Switches and Roku TVs are protected. When it comes to support, this is really where ExpressVPN falls short in my recent experience. They've offered a live chat in the past, but right now due to everything happening in the world, they're unable to offer a live chat and are offering support via email only. While I do understand the unforeseen circumstances happening right now, there are still companies out there killing it with great customer support and ExpressVPN has a long response time. I reached out about two days before filming this video to ask about changing the email address on my account and I have still not received a reply from ExpressVPN. I have full confidence that they will reply and get things sorted out, but I do wish they were replying quicker. This has been the weakest link in my recent experience with ExpressVPN. So in the end, is ExpressVPN really worth $99 a year? Absolutely. If you want the best overall VPN that's gonna be great for streaming, lightning fast, and available on a lot of devices, this VPN is for you. Seriously, I think you're gonna be really happy with this VPN if speed and streaming is a priority. And if you use my link in the description below, you can get three months free on a one-year account. So you're actually getting 15 months for $99. But what if you don't want to spend $99 a year? I get it, that's a lot of money to spend on a VPN, and maybe you're looking for something cheaper. Well, there's lots of solid options. Check out Surfshark for a good budget option, and Molvad for an impressive privacy-forward VPN. But again, 
if you're searching for the best of the best, ExpressVPN is for you. So which VPN do you use? I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you like this video, do be sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you don't miss when I release new videos. With that said, I will catch you guys next time.